just when I thought they couldn't get any better, here comes perfection. Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend Bourbon Whiskey is a blend of 11 and 18 year old MGP bourbons finished in Armagnac Cass. It is bottled at 62.15% alcohol by volume or 124.3 proof. This is batch 21, bottle 207, sells for anywhere between $150 and $200 in the United States. Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend Bourbon. So, I reviewed the Murray Hill Club, an absolutely superb bourbon. And when you have a whiskey that, that's that fantastic, that superb, uh, that spectacular, you think, okay, this is it. This is the, the, the creme de la creme. This is the best they've got. And then you have a bottle like this, and you're just like, OMG, this is freaking unbelievable. Anything I said about the Murray Hill Club, you could take that and then times that by 10. The thing that amazes me the most about this bourbon is it is this big, it is this powerful, and yet it is this, and I know some people might object to me saying this, this feminine, this delicate, and this layered. So, classic bourbon notes are there but delivered in, in a completely different way. Let me see if I can put it this way. Imagine if you have, you know, a very good artist who takes paint and puts it on a canvas and you go, oh, that's a pretty painting. And then you have a Rembrandt, a Picasso, a Da Vinci. And you're like, that just takes it to a whole nother level. That makes anything else just really, really, really amateur in comparison, and that's where we're at with the cigar blend. <sighs> now, the whiskey is named a cigar blend. Not that it smells and tastes like a cigar, but it's intended to be an, an accoutrement uh, to go along uh, with a cigar. I can't smoke, I'm asthmatic. I don't particularly want to smoke. I don't want to in inhale it, and yet, I can kind of see we're doing a pairing uh, with this bourbon and a cigar would work really well. In terms of slight, uh, you know, smokiness and a little bit of earthiness, uh, and maybe even a savory note, or even a sweetness of a tobacco, I could see how it would pair. So as a small yay, I'm in the habit of pairing uh, food with wine, and in the olden days, in the quarter mass small yays, um, in, at the master level, they would actually do cigar service. They don't anymore. But I can see why you would want a bourbon that would go along with cigars. And I only know of one other, I think it's a Dalmor that does something that is, has that bent of a cigar uh, pairing uh, with their whiskey. So this is just takes a whole nother. So it caramels, vanilla, uh, candy corn, apple pie, peach cobbler. There is um, sort of an apricot, compote note to it uh, vanilla cinnamon nutmeg there is a slight earthiness to it probably coming from the wood so there is a very fine you would say if, if you ever done cabinetry or any woodwork or thing like that uh, and you wor work with wood and you get these really beautiful aromas coming off of wood as you're sanding or or milling or anything like that uh, or you know planing it there's this just fresh, uh, sweet oak coming from it as you sort of get through the layers, that is there as well. And yet, it's not a woody bourbon. It's not like some super young or bourbon where you just, it's like just freshly pl plain wood. There, but there is this sweet wood character to the bourbon. There is a slight savory note there as well. So, it's sweet and it's savory. It's floral, there's a light floral note, and there's a honey note, honeysuckle. In fact, I would say even on the floral note, it's more like, yeah, it, it's a more like a honeysuckle, so it's a sweet honey floral aroma. 
Like the Murray Hill, this is a bourbon you could spend a lot of time on just enjoying uh, it on those. In fact, you almost feel like you should put it into like a, uh, uh, you know, like a cognac glass and sort of roll it around in your hand, you know, and just continue uh, smelling it like that. But that's not how I enjoy my whiskeys. I like them in a Glencairn or even a Rocks. On the Rocks, in, 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 a, uh, uh, in, a, in a Spey, a uh, Riedel Spey glass. So this is a whiskey at this particular, you know, high ABV will do just fine on ice. In fact, on ice, I get sort of a um, melted vanilla, uh, French vanilla ice cream note. It's absolutely spectacular. All right, on the palate. How do they do this? How? I mean, this is the smoothest, silkiest, velvety bourbon. In fact, I'm just gonna go to whiskey in, in general, period. On the palate, it's dangerously delicious. It is so seductive. It has so many layers. And it goes, I mean, it goes across your palate just like silk, just like velvet. So, it takes you on a nice ride, but it's not like a, you know, a punch in the face of of oak and bourbon and and, and corn and you know the, and spice. It's a gentle ride. So sweet vanillas and caramels, apple, apple compote, um, a creme brulee, vanilla, caramels. There is a slight, uh, on the back end, there's a slight tobacco character to it. But, so my dad, when I was growing up, my dad has smoked a pipe and, uh, but the pipe tobacco, before you light it, there's a, can you have like a sweet component to a sweet tobacco note? It's something like that. There was like no burn. I don't even get like a chest warmth from the bourbon, from the alcohol. It goes down super smooth and silky and velvety, which is what makes this thing so dangerous because you immediately want to pick it up and drink another one. And yet, as I'm talking now, I'm still tasting it. The length of the finish on this is absolutely mind blowing. The descriptors I'm using, these classic bourbon descriptors, really fail to do it justice. Words fail to really convey the experience of this bourbon. But there's apple pie, there's peach cobbler, there's a little bit of apricot in there. You get your caramels, your vanillas, your cinnamon, your, your nutmeg. This is the difference between, uh, you know those hostess pies you can pick up at your convenience store at a 7-Eleven? And your grandma's apple pie that she made, you know? If you, if you had one of grandma who made really, really good pies, or your mom who made absolutely spectacular killer pies just to die for, right? That's the difference between your budget bourbons, your, you know, it can be very, very satisfactory, you know, your 15, 20, 30 dollar, whatever, budget bourbons, and this one. The difference between a hostess uh, apple pie, maybe you throw it in the microwave, and your, your, your mother's or your grandmother's or your aunt's pie that just made with a lot of uh, love and character and time and tradition. This is absolutely superb. But the price range, right? The price range. I know for a lot of people, that is gonna be the challenge. But I would say this straight up, forget Pappy Van Winkle. Forget him, forget him, forget him, forget him. If you want a high-end bourbon, still under $200, or south, you can get it under $200, jump on this one, jump on this one. Yeah, it's in that $150 to $200, $100 range. It's, unless you can afford it, it's not an everyday sipper. It's, it's, this is a, maybe a special occasion whiskey, a special occasion bourbon for your birthdays, for for the holidays or something like that. Or do you want to impress your boss or a friend or something like that? Yeah, it's in that category, but still, there are a lot of people who are spending a lot more money 
for whiskeys, for bourbon that deliver a lot less. And I just want to laugh in a sense. Uh, why are you spending on your money on stuff that has a lot of hype to it, but really doesn't deliver? I'm going to say, if you want a bourbon that just can absolutely blow your mind, this is the one to get, the cigar blend. Yeah, it can be challenging to get, right? My recommendation is, um, if you have your mindset, I want to get one. When they first are released, if you can, buy one because... The previous releases are just going to get more and more and more expensive. So if you're going after last year's release and the year before that and the year before that, all you're going to see is an increase in prices, right? So you want to get those when they're still at your retail price to get the best bang for the bottle and maybe even buy more than one for future. Because when the mastery of the whiskey is coming from not a particular vintage necessarily, or necessarily um, from these unique casts that are sort of a uh, freak of nature that just happen to show up. But when it's the work of the master blender, you can have the sort of guarantee that the master blender is going to do their best to pro continue to produce high end whiskeys that are gonna deliver. Yeah, sure. Maybe future bottlings might be better. Maybe f previous bottlings might be better. But at this level of perfection, you can be guaranteed that whether you got a previous bottling or one after this, you're going to be absolutely satisfied. And you're going to get the best bang for your buck and when you get them on release. So if you're watching this video after this has n is no longer available on the shelf, don't kill yourself and try to find one. All right? Likewise, if, if you're searching around for a bottle and you see previous releases, previous batches that are going for far more money than what this one's currently going for, don't care yourself. Get one when they uh, on the next release and as soon as they uh, they come they come out and buy yourself one or two. Right? You don't need to become a hoarder because they're going to continue to release them um, and they're going to continue to produce this level of perfection. Absolutely guaranteed. This is another bottle that I will continue to buy and will always have on my shelf, a part of my uh, whiskey library. Now, what am I gonna give this in terms of a score? I gave the Murray Hill 95 points. I'm gonna go 98 points, 98 points. Uh, I think 2020 is gonna be really competitive. Uh, I, good luck to all the whiskeys I've had if they want to be in the top 10. It looks like I may end up having a lot more bourbons on my top 10 list for 2020 than I've been anticipating because this is absolutely superb. Alrighty. Um, if you're one of my patrons, I want to thank you very much for supporting my channel and for joining my little group. If you have not subscribed to my uh, channel and you like my reviews, uh, do me a favor. Subscribe. Give this uh, video a thumbs up. Uh, ring the bell to be notified when I go live or when I post a new video. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.